بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My respected brothers in Islam for every institution to become successful it must have a strong leader for every government to be strong they must choose a strong leader for every company want to prosper they bring a strong CIO and they pay him big money why so the company can flourish if the leader of any organization is corrupt eventually the organization going to collapse everything every business needs a smart strong leader that takes it and move it forward so it can make money and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he made for us every individual a leader that he obeys a leader that he does not disobey whatever he says you would do you don't even think twice the order comes and you haste and if he's corrupt he'll take you to jahannam and if he's corrected he'll take you to jannah the heart the heart this leader that leads you to do everything in your life. That commander that commands you to do everything. If it is corrupted, then everything that you do is corrupted. And that is, Mistaqu hadithi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa This is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala wa inna fil jasad la mudgha. Inside the body, there is a morsel of flesh, and it is what, ya shabab, the heart. Ida saluh, if it is clean, pure, saluh al jasad kullo, the whole body is corrected. Wa ida fasad, if it is corrupted, the whole body will follow it. This misconception misunderstanding the theory that only exists in the books of theories that my heart is good and my body is bad that doesn't exist in reality if your heart is clean then you will enter jannah this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah qaf إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Comes with a safe, clean heart. And that's why my respected brothers, when most of us come to Islam or want to come to Islam and come and adhere to the deen, and some brothers who've been in the deen for a very long time, yet his wife still complains. Sheikh, you don't know my husband. He just acts good in front of the, the brothers. And when he comes home, he's a shaitan. Sheikh, you don't know my... Um, a mother calls crying. Sheikh, you know my son, his name... Yes, I know him, mashallah. He's very good. <laughs> yeah, that's in front of you. Yesterday, he swore at me. This is... Nothing but corruption in the heart. This is, but it is not except sickness in the heart. Why? Because if the heart is clean, a tadayun will be real, re real. And that is a problem that the whole youth suffer from. And it's not in one center or one masjid. No, all the youth. We love the deen. We love Islam. We want, we want to come to Islam. We come to Islam, we start with Islam, but we still do hand. Shuf, there is no great alim except he wrote books about Islam al-Qulub. 
Onu da öyle mi? Either directly he write a book or indirectly. Why? Because by the end of the day you meet Allah with your heart. And if your heart is correct, then eventually your limb is going to be correct. You're going to do the right thing. You will never do the wrong thing. But if there's a problem in the heart, then, sure, then your actions will be all corrupted. Pay attention to the ayah. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبَصَارِ the sight, it is not the sight that go blind. You see some shuyukh sometimes, he's blind. But he has more understanding than anyone who has sight. Why? It is the heart that is inside the chest. That is what goes blind. You can have the best sight in the world, Superman. You can have the best vision in the world. You can see properly. But your heart is blind. That's why you cannot have good akhlaq and manners. Ninety percent of our problems, ninety percent of our problems as a Muslim community, as the Shabab, is the matter of akhlaq. The manners. How to have good manners. Manners with Allah, first and foremost. Manners with Islam, and manners with others. Muslims and other than Muslims. We have no manners. Why we don't have manners? Because the heart is not clean yet. Take an example. Ya Sheikh, I can't stand my wife. I bless you, can't stand your wife, Ya Wallahi, my wife, she gets on my nose. Do you think my wife doesn't get on my nose? Well, like just your wife gets on your nose. Every wife gets on the nerve of the husband. But there is a problem with you. What is it? You have no sabr. And sabr where? Is in the heart. You haven't learned to be sabr. Wallahi, Allah created me like that. If He created you like that, why would He, what would he, why would he say? Why would he order us to be patient? If Allah created us with something we can't practice, so why would he order us to do something we can't practice? Allah will never order you to pray on the moon because he knows you can't do it. But Allah orders you to do something that you can do. Surah Al-Asr. Order each other with sabr. Most of our problems goes to the heart. That's why the brother, very important, very important, to correct his inside his heart, so he can correct his relationship first and foremost with Allah. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to deal and how I have akhlaq with dealing with Allah. An a'bud Allah ka'anni arah. I worship Allah as if I see him. Why as if you see him? Because before I do the haram, oh, Allah is watching me. Allah is watching me. Once you say Allah is watching me, that means you are seeing Allah. And you know Allah is seeing you. Akhlaq with Allah. To find you whatever pleases Allah. And not to find you in the places of haram. Akhlaq with Islam. The Shaykh spoke about the Salat and waking up for the Salat. It is from Akhlaq with Islam is to practice the Ibadat properly. You go work for a business and the man is paying you and you don't do your work properly, he's going to suck you. You say, I'm a Muslim. I want to adhere to Islam. I want to become a good Muslim. And then I do not preserve and take care of my ibadah properly. I do not look after my salat. I do not look after my zakat. I do not practice Islam properly. You have no akhlaq in dealing with the ibadah of Islam. <coughs> and then see what's the problem inside your heart. Why? You find there's a problem. Maybe it's the love of dunya. 
But see, it's in, in love wasting time. But it is you have love, you don't have pa enough patience with the ibadah. Subhanallah. Akhlaq was dealing with others. The manners. It also comes from the heart how to deal with the others. The simple character that we should have in our heart, mahabba for others. And I'll show you in a minute how we misunderstand the mahabba with others. Very easy, after Sheikh Shadi last night, he said, brothers, get up and hug each other. We found that. Did anyone find it hard? Now, imagine one of these brothers, you had a big fight with him. Just last night, just yesterday, just last week. And you haven't been talking to him. And Sheikh Shadi said, hug each other. You probably thought, gee, it's dark. Go around and hug others. That means there is a problem in your heart. And you have no akhlaq. Because you, if you have akhlaq, you hug the brother and you tell him, Fa'lan, I love you from the sake of Allah. It's easy to say the word the bro. But we don't understand the meaning behind the bro. It's easy to say to your brother, I love you for the sake of Allah, bro. But you don't understand the meaning of it. We're still far away from the real brotherhood. Way far away. And that's why. All goes back, filtering through to the heart. And there are many ways a person can correct the heart. First, by dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ to learn the deen of Islam, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ The first one. By the remembrance of Allah. To remember Allah a lot. And to remember Allah with the understanding when you say Allah Akbar. To know what Allah Akbar means. I mean Allah is greater than everything. Allah greater by my dunya and my little wants and needs from this dunya. Allah is greater than my nafs. And everything. When you say Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, all words of a great meaning for you to reflect on and to learn your deen, to practice your deen. Because more and more you learn this beautiful deen, the more you have khashya in your heart. And the ones who have true khashya of Allah are the scholars, the people of knowledge. And the more you get closer to them, the more you have fear to Allah and from Allah. And another important kiwa, and this can go for lectures here, ikhwah. And I'm sure all the shiyukh speak about that regularly. And we must not belittle this topic. We must not belittle this topic. <coughs> this topic of correcting our nafs. Some people, they get sick of it. They say, Wallah, well, Shaykh, we all, what we hear is this talk. Ya akhi, ma this is muftah, this is the key. With it that you're going to enter paradise. But we just said, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ And when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he was asked, مَنْ خَيْرُ النَّاسِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ He said, صَدُوقُ اللِّسَانِ ذُو الْقَلْبِ الْمَخْمُومِ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام The truthful tongue, the one who has a قلب مخموم So they said the companion, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ طَيِّبٍ We understand صَدُوقُ اللِّسَانِ Truthful tongue what is the Qalb al makhmum Shuf the companions. They want to understand this word, they couldn't understand. The Prophet وسلم, said, and he, he is the most eloquent, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to them, Al Qalb al Naqi al Taqi. Al Qalb that has taqwa and naqi. But what is the Qalb al Taqi? Al Qalb al Taqi that means it has piety and in no need of this dunya. This is one. Al Naqi. Al-Naqi, the best way I can describe it for you, get a glass of clean water and look at, look at, look at a cup of water with, it, with, it, with, with, it, with a clean water and look at it how you see it clean, clear. That is Al-Qalb Al-Naqi. al naqa To have this heart clean and clear. Whatever inside of it, it shows. And that mean, doesn't mean in a negative way, no. That means... <coughs> If you have rudeness in your heart, to say this is how I am, brother, I don't care. Whatever in my heart, I just say it. I can't hold it back. No. This has been rude. 
Whatever in your heart, try to suppress it and remove it. But don't hurt others with it. So you can have Qalb Naqi. A Qalb Naqi that means لا غل فيه ولا حسد as the Prophet ﷺ continues to say. The one that there is no غل, there is no hatred to others with it. There is no envy for others to it. Uh, to, ولا to. بغي and no oppression in it for others. Does it oppress others? <coughs> Does the heart oppress or the limb oppress? When you oppress someone, you press him with your hand, your fist, or you press him with your heart. Shabkon, you sleep. Ah, you still sleep. With your fist, your hand. But the Prophet ﷺ attributed it to the heart. Why? Because the root of the baghi in the, in, in, in the limbs, in the hand, it comes back to the heart because the heart is a baghi. That's, that's, very important. And like a taqi that has taqwa. And a naqi that is clean and clear towards others. We live with clarity with others. When I say to my brother, I do love you, fi sabilillah, that means truly I love you. And if he needs anything, I'm there for him. By the end of the day, you're dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not dealing with him. You might see you see you're dealing with this person in this dunya, but you're dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have the amrad al qulub that we have that creates ninety percent of our problem. We need to realize the problem. You yourself sit down and say to yourself, "Why I am re reacting in such a way? Why do I react violently? One. Why do I lie? Why do I cheat? That why I'm always having fights with my wife." If the Prophet ﷺ was in my situation now, how would he deal with, it, with this problem? You find out that goes back to ego that you have. You don't want your wife to say no to you. The Prophet ﷺ, his wife used to say no to him. Who are you? Umar! And you all read and heard about Umar radiallahu anhu. His wife used to shout and scream inside the house. <laughs> You're not better than Umar. But Umar was a man. Some of us are cowards. You know what cowards mean? He smashes the biggest plate in the house and the biggest thing in the house. Why? Because inside of him there's cowardness. The real man, he says, Shadidu bis sara. That's a hadith of Prophet. The strong one is not the one who act mention. No. A shadid, the strong one who's able to control his temper when it gets out of control. Hada was a strong man. My respected brothers, adhere to. Knowing your faults, knowing your mistakes. And if you are now from this talk, you understood that Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I am Alhamdulillah, very good. It's that brother sitting next to me, A'udhu Billah. Or you understood, it's not me, it's, 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 it's Abu, Abu Khalid, you know, Abu Khalid there, over there in Sydney, inshallah. I'm going to remember what Abu Adnan says, I'm going to go tell him. That means you, you're still sick and very sick, you have a big problem. You still have a huge problem and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. If you understood it from this talk that Abu Adnan is talking about himself and he's talking about me, Alhamdulillah. If you understand that this talk for you, you personally, then Alhamdulillah, a first step of finding what is wrong with us. And no one is perfect. Except Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So everyone has something to work on. Inshallah, you'll understand from this camp. To go back and see even if every month you correct one mistake from your own mistakes, by the end of the year you correct 12. And given another year, correct 24. You can imagine. Then you'll have the Qalb al Salim, Al Qalb al Naqi al Mahmoom, that enters paradise, insha'Allah. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, nashadu, Allah, ilaha, 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 ilaha,